This is the BBC third programme. This evening we are broadcasting from the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden, a performance of Balfe's opera, The Bohemian Girl. The libretto by Alfred Bunn has been adapted by Dennis Arundel, and the opera has been specially arranged by Sir Thomas Beecham. There will be two intervals at 10 to 8 and 20 past 9. The cast is as follows. Count Arnheim, governor of Pressburg, Jess Walters, Tadeus, a Polish exile, Antony Marlowe, Florestein, the Count's nephew, Marie Dickey, Devil's Hoof, chief of the gypsies, Howell Glynn, Arlene, the Count's daughter, Roberta Peters, and the gypsy queen, Edith Coates. With the Covent Garden Opera Chorus, Chorus Master Douglas Robinson, and the Covent Garden Opera Orchestra, leader Thomas Matthews. The opera is conducted by Sir Thomas Beecham. One evening in the early 19th century, in one of the border castles of Austria, surrounded by forests and rocky mountains, Count Arnheim, with his soldiers, friends, and peasants from the neighboring village, are celebrating the defeat of the Polish forces. Their enthusiasm at the raising of the Austrian standard is tempered by relief that peaceful times have come again. Count Arnheim lives only for his young daughter, Arlene, a child of six years old, as his nephew, young Florestein, is an effete member of the old family. To mark the new days of peace, the friends of the Count have made up a hunting party, and they set off up the rocky hill into the forest, followed by some of the peasants and little Arlene with her nurse. When all have gone, there appears through the ravine between two crags over which a fallen tree has formed a bridge, an exhausted fugitive from the defeated Polish forces. It is a young nobleman named Tadeus. Far from his homeland, he sees no hope of escape from the Austrians who are searching the countryside. And finding himself under the Austrian flag itself, he is ready to choose death rather than slavery. But listening to the carefree song of some poor bohemian gypsies making their way through the forest, he asks them and their captain Devil's Hoof if he may join them. Always ready to help those in misfortune, the gypsies welcome him. And just as the Austrian soldiers arrive in search of him, they give him a disguise and at the same time send the soldiers on a wild goose chase into the mountains. The gypsies and their new comrade are about to set off on their wanderings when a cry is heard from the forest. A wild stag at bay has charged and struck down the young Arlene. Tadeus seizes a gun and shoots the stag dead as it is about to charge again. And at the sound of the shot, the whole castle is aroused. When the Count finds that the wound in Arlene's arm is not serious and that she will soon recover, he asks who saved her. Finding it is the supposed gypsy, he invites him to stay for the celebrations and Tadeus consents. Although unwilling to stay among his enemies, he is afraid that a refusal might make them suspect him. The villagers dance, and then the Count proposes the health of the Emperor. All drink except Tadeus, who dashes his glass to the ground rather than drink to a tyrant. It is with difficulty that the Count, in gratitude, prevents the others from killing him or at least making him prisoner. He sends the gypsies away, he sends the gypsy away, and at the same time flings him a purse of gold. This Tadeus proudly refuses and only escapes into the forest through the intervention of Devil's Hoof, who is himself overpowered and imprisoned in the castle, vowing revenge. The dancing proceeds, but during it Devil's Hoof, having managed to escape, climbs unseen into the window of Arlene's room and soon comes out with the sleeping child in his arms. At the end of the dance, the nurse appears distraught at the window and all are in a panic as they see Devil's Hoof with the child in his arms as a shield against the soldier's guns make his dangerous way across the fallen tree over the ravine. When he reaches the further cliff, he hurls the tree down into the gorge below and so ensures his escape.
That is the end of the first act of Balfe's opera, The Bohemian Girl, broadcast from the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden.